In your own words, how does self-sacrifice help others? Because you are very involved in the community and through your church, and you mentioned something about self-sacrifice, and I'd like to hear how it helps you and helps others. Well, I think that you have to sacrifice a lot of your time in order to accomplish, do accomplish and make achievements happen. Because if you just lay back and let everybody else do it, then you're not, you're not leaving an impression on anything. And I think if you self-sacrifice your time and your abilities, then you're going to leave an impression that's going to last. Okay, so wow, right? Today I want to talk a little bit about echoism and codependency, and I wanted to include that tape. I know the quality is not the best, I apologize. It was filmed on technology that's nearly 16 years old now, and I know that I'm aging myself by saying that, but it was so chilling for me to find it and realize that I was answering a question on self-sacrifice. And the MC had asked me that question based on an essay I submitted prior, so very interesting for me to see that I was already focused on self-sacrifice at the age of 17. Uh, more recently, I had taken some online testing on narcissism and codependency and equism, and I scored very low on narcissism, but very high on equism. So very, very interesting for me. What is equism? Equors are codependent individuals who live to serve the narcissist. And today I want to talk a little bit more about codependency in general and why the narcissists love codependence so much. So if you look up codependency in a dictionary, you'll see it defined as an excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner, typically a partner who suffers from illness and or an addiction. In other words, codependents rely on the emotional well-beings of their partners in order to fill their own cups. But we're not just talking about any partners here. We're talking about partners who suffer from an illness and or an addiction, much like narcissism. These individuals, the codependents, do not have a healthy concept of self, uh, much like the narcissist, and they are not satisfied unless they are able to satisfy the needs of others. This is why they need someone who they believe relies on them, even falsely, and the narcissist is able to provide this. So narcissists thrive in what is termed narcissistic supply. Simply put, these are the reserves filled by the energy of others. So you can see why the narcissist would love to find a person who is codependent, right? Someone who is not only willing, but needs to fulfill the narcissist's needs. And you can see what an actor the narcissist would probably become betraying someone who is meek and modest, a sad, poor character who needs the codependent. And that's all part of his mind games. So this person, uh, more so than someone who is more independent, is able to provide the narcissist with the supply he craves. Narcissists are social predators. Uh, they seek out the most vulnerable prey, the most caring, empathetic, uh, giving individuals. Not necessarily weak. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, codependents have lived life. They have experienced trauma, typically childhood trauma, much like the narcissist, and they live with that sense of, sh of shame from the trauma that they endured, and they have been through their fair share of obstacles. So they tend to be very strong-minded, strong-willed. Um, they want to be seen by others as independent, even though inwardly, sadly, they are not. Um, and true sociopaths, it's been said, like challenging prey. So uh, these individuals can provide this challenge for the narcissist. Uh, the narcissist it has to win over their trust, and he loves this, okay? The ultimate aphrodisiac is to wear challenging prey down to total dependency, and that would be the ultimate reward for the narcissist. So sadly, if these two personalities find each other, they are often destined to dance in misery for all of eternity, uh, because they need each other, because they feed off of each other. And um, if the relationship gets too abusive for the codependent and by some divine miracle she is able to escape her narcissistic partner, unfortunately this person will most likely repeat this relational pattern over and over again. So the codependent must be willing to change. She must be able to gain the self-confidence that she lacks in order to break the vicious cycle. And what is really tough for the codependent to hear, but also very essential, is that she is the cause of her own unhappiness. Um, she, if she is unable to see that a pattern is formed here and it needs to be broken, she will lead herself again and again into this, into this awful situation. So this is very tough, okay? Um, it's not easy to get a codependent to see that he or she is bringing about their own bad karma. Um, this person has a very low self-esteem and needs to be handled with care. 
the worst thing that a therapist or a counselor can do for this individual is to diminish um, his or her poor uh, self-concept anymore, okay? So, however, a firm discussion does need to be had here uh, for the benefit of the codependent. This person needs to realize that they cannot continue to seek out narcissistic partners and expect to be happy. And this is the definition of insanity, right? Um, repeating the same patterns over and over and expecting a different result. Um, they will never receive genuine gratification in a relationship with a narcissist. And this is something that the codependent really needs. The awkward really needs to feel loved. Um, and unfortunately, they're never going to receive this from a narcissist. So basically, if someone is codependent, um, it is a miracle that he or she realizes this. Um, once they are made to realize this, then, it, you know, discussions need to be had as to how this pattern can be broken and the uh, codependent can escape once and for all. So thanks for listening. Have a good day, everyone.